Hello everyone, we're going to start talking about immunity. The immune system is the system in our body that fights diseases. Its job is to defend us against things that might make us sick. For example, bacteria and viruses. How healthy we are depends on how well we can defend ourselves. At home or travelling, we need a strong immune system in order to be healthy. I became very interested in this topic while I was doing research in Africa. I had studied immunity in school, but living in another country helped me understand the issues much better. Today I'm going to focus on adaptive immunity. I'll explain this in detail in a minute. But first know that there are different kinds of adaptive immunity. We develop it naturally, based on where we live and based on some diseases we get. We can also develop it artificially through vaccines, okay? Basically, adaptive immunity means that our bodies learn to fight things that we're exposed to. If you live in Tokyo, you'll develop adaptive immunity to the microorganisms in Tokyo. Similarly, someone in Paris develops immunity to the germs in Paris. In Beijing, immunity to what's in Beijing, okay? You can pick any place. Our bodies adapt. They adjust to what's in our environment. Building up adaptive immunity takes time. It can take a couple of years. This is the reason why young children, say one to three years old, get sick often. They haven't built up the resistance to the germs around them. As they get older, they tend to get sick less. Let's consider what happens when someone travels to another country. For example, a Chinese business traveler goes to South Africa, or an American student goes to Ecuador. The germs and diseases are different there. The adaptive immunity these two individuals have developed back home won't protect them abroad, will it? Well, what's the result? They're more likely to get sick, and it may not just affect them. Let's suppose that the business traveler is exposed to a contagious disease like influenza, and she becomes sick after she returns home. She might spread it to someone back home, someone who most likely lacks the immunity to that influenza virus. Public health officials are very aware of how quickly contagious diseases can spread. We're all concerned about serious diseases like avian or bird flu, as well as less serious viruses and germs. With so much global travel these days, there are more incidents of diseases being transmitted. So we need to keep in mind the immunity issues related to global travel. Now let's look at two types of adaptive immunity in more detail. I'll give you an example of each. Please pay attention to how they're different. First of all, there's a girl named Kimmy who catches a cold. In a week, she feels much better. The adaptive immunity made her body strong enough to resist the cold virus that made her sick this time, so she got well. That doesn't mean that she'll never get a cold again, does it? We all get colds from time to time. Now, let's consider Kimmy's younger sister, Meg. Meg catches the chickenpox virus, right? A common childhood disease caused by a virus, the VZV virus. After 10 days, she recovers. She shouldn't get chickenpox ever again, not for the rest of her life. We call this lifelong protective immunity. In both cases, we see adaptive immunity at work. Here's the crucial difference. Our immune systems only remember certain viruses. So Kimmy is not immune to all cold viruses. She'll get a cold again in her life. But Meg's body has what we call immunological memory to chickenpox. Her immune system will remember chickenpox and she won't get it again. She has lifelong protective immunity. I want to move on now to talking about vaccines. Vaccines are one of the most effective ways to prevent certain types of disease. The idea behind vaccines is simple. It is better to keep people from getting sick than to try to treat them after they've already become sick. Do you recall from your book how vaccines work? In brief, a vaccine puts something into your body that your immune system responds to as foreign. The immune system fights that foreign body and creates antibodies against it to protect you in the future. 
Think back to Meg and her chickenpox and her immunological memory. It's a similar situation here with vaccines. Your immune system remembers something from the vaccine and now knows how to fight back to prevent you from getting sick. Vaccines are a very convenient, quick way to boost our immunity. Doctors recommend vaccines before we go to other countries because there isn't time for our bodies to adjust to the germs in the short time we're there. I just have to add a quick comment. Some people in the developed countries like the US don't give their kids vaccines because they believe they're unnecessary and harmful. Personally, I think that's irresponsible. I know from my own research in Africa that vaccines for young children can make a huge positive difference in a community's health. Anyway, moving on. Now, let's briefly consider some positive steps that we can take to promote our own immune systems and good health in general. First, I'd say good nutrition. What we eat is very important to our overall health. Malnutrition is the most common reason for immunity problems worldwide. Second, keep things clean. Basic hygiene. Our hands, our homes, everything needs to be clean. Third, reduce stress. That's a big one. Stress affects everyone, young and old. It can lower our immunity. To sum up the key points of today, think about what adaptive immunity is and how we can develop it. And consider what you can do to stay healthy.